Tel Hebron, the tomb of Jesse and Ruth, Kever Ishai Varut, Ishai Jesse, King David's father, Ruth, his great grandmother, buried here on the peak of ancient Tel Hebron in the city of Hebron. And it's written, after Shaul Melech, King Saul, was killed in the war with the Philistines, and God said to David that he should go up into the hills of Judea. And David said to God, where? And the response was Hebron. And so here David came and ruled in Hebron for seven and a half years, starting here the kingdom of Judea and later the kingdom of Israel, before rising up to Jerusalem, to Yerushalayim, to make that the eternal capital of the Jewish people, the capital of the Jewish people forever. And this is where it started. This is where it began over 3,000 years ago. The structure here in front of us was probably originally built about a thousand years ago. And at that time, there was some kind of a crusader fortress here. This building, of course, is much newer, added on much later. Today, Jews come to study here and to pray here at the site of the roots of the Kingdom of Israel, here in ancient Tel Hebron. But this site has artifacts which are certainly well over a thousand years old. As we walk down here, we can see an ancient room Look at the size of the rocks at the entrance to this building. And as we go down further, we come to the entrance of an amazing place. Here we come to the entrance of an ancient synagogue some 1,500 years old. Today, 1,500 years later, people still worship at this site in a Jewish synagogue 1,500 years old. We can only wonder at the people who lived here and prayed here and studied here so many years ago. But what is so amazing is not that people prayed here 1,500 years ago, but that people still pray here today. Here inside the renovated tomb of Jesse and Ruth, Kever Ishai Verut, people come to pray, to study, to be alone, to contemplate. Here we have 
A scroll of Ruth, written on parchment, which is read every Shavuot holiday here at the tomb of Jesse and Ruth. Here, 3,000 years after David ruled, beginning the kingdom of Israel at this very site, Jews still live. We need not use only our imaginations to picture what was here then because it's still here today. At Kevri Shaivarut, the tomb of Jesse and Ruth, and ancient Tel Hebron, here in the city of Hebron. Ancient Tel Hebron, olive trees, hundreds, perhaps thousands of years old, coming down to a plateau where between the trees we have a magnificent image. Here in the valley, the tomb of the patriarchs, Maharat Machpelah, as it's written, Emek Hebron, the valley of Hebron, as we see from here, from ancient Tel Hebron, in between the olive trees. As we walk through the olive grove, we can wonder at the size of the trunks of the trees. The beauty that has heralded this area for hundreds and thousands of years. And here we come to one of the most fascinating sights in all of Hebron. Here, in the early 1960s, excavations were carried out. And here were discovered ancient walls, huge walls, probably dating back the days of Abraham and maybe even prior to Abraham. It is written twice that Abraham purchased the caves of Machpelah at the gates to the city of Hebron. And it's very possible that this was the southern gate to Hebron. And it's very possible that this is where Abraham stood to purchase the caves of Machpelah 3,800 years ago. And here we stand today at those very gates.
amongst the olive trees on ancient Tel Hebron. Standing atop the walls, only being able to imagine how high they were 4,000 years ago. A guard overlooking the city from the inside. And from the out. If only these trees could talk, what a story they would tell. Here, in land purchased by Jews, 1807. Here Jews still live today. Here Jews still walk today. Here, Jews through the trees. See where it all began. In Hebron. Tell Hebron. Modern Tel Hebron. Children playing outside. Living on the ancient Tel. Life. 3,000 years after King David. Almost 4,000 years after Abraham. Goats.
And here around the side. We even have a horse. Here, the old and the new, the ancient and the modern, all come together. Here we find the Jewish people, over hundreds and thousands of years, blending together our past and our present. And also our future. Here, in Tel Hebron, we have a silo for storing food, probably from the days of Joshua. And right above the silo we have a house, 2,700 years old, built during the days of Hezekiah HaMelech, King Hezekiah. And here on the top stone, we can see a patch of black from the fire when San Kharif came and burned down Hebron during the war with the Jewish people 2,700 years ago. Here we have wine cisterns 1,500 years ago. Here we have an ancient house 4,000 years old and just to the side of it, a street. And adjacent to the street, we have a wall. This wall is probably 4,500 years old. It was built not three meters high as it is today, but 10 meters high, about as high as the building right next to it. And it was six meters deep, 4,500 years old. That's the days of Noah. And right across from the wall is another wall. This one a little bit newer. This wall only 3,700 years old, dating back to the days of Abraham. And between the two walls, we have stairs. Stairs that are probably over 4,000 years old. And as we walk these stairs, we can only imagine who walked these stairs in the valley below, leading up thousands of years ago, here in ancient Tel Hebron, leading to the gates to the city of Hebron, where the archaeologists believe that if they kept digging here, this very site, they would find those gates, the northern gate to the city. It's written that Abraham purchased the caves of Machpelah for the Jewish people at the gates to the city of Hebron. Where did he make that purchase? On the southern side or on the northern side right here? And just as Jews lived here so many thousands of years ago, so they still live here today.
Chevron. The old is very old. The new and the newest. People who come to see, to study, to learn, to discover, to experience. To experience the wonders of Tel Hebron. Thank <laughs> you.